thanks for coming back to shooting it straight lately I've had a couple of friends approach me and ask if buying a used Glock was a good option so I'll tell you exactly what I told them I can't seem to get away from these Glock videos God almighty but here here's the thing generally uh, a used Glock is a good option depending on the price of course now I mean for example you know if you're looking at a used uh, Gen 3 Glock in your local pawn shop with a price tag of 475 bucks but you know you can get a new Gen 4 Glock for like 550 or maybe 575 alright in that case I think the new Glock would be the better option that's my personal opinion just spend the extra 75 bucks or maybe 100 bucks and get the brand new one now however if the price suits you well you know go ahead and inspect the gun because you're going to have to inspect it you should before you buy it but a lot of people don't know exactly what to look for you know it's not complicated there's nothing really specific uh, but there are some general things and I'll try to go over that uh, Glocks generally hold up very well even after heavy use which is why they hold their value so well in the used gun world uh, one of the great things about a Glock is that nearly any part or component can be quickly and easily replaced with a brand new part and usually for little cost now first ask the store owner or the sales rep for permission to remove the slide from the frame for inspection let them know you want to inspect it but you're going to have to remove the, the slide from the frame ask ask for permission okay we want to be courteous and respectful right now we want to look for signs of use versus abuse alright used guns will typically show some holster wear you know on the slide and maybe some maybe some wear to the finish on the barrel here alright now this is normal and keep in mind you'll see it up here on the hood barrel hood of the chamber right here and you'll see it right there now this one this is a fairly new gun and I haven't shot it too often and what I have shot through it a lot of it has been 357 SIG because I have a 357 SIG conversion barrel and a lot of ammo is shot through that barrel this is the 40 caliber barrel here so, but you'll ha you'll see some what looks like wear marks, and this is like holster wear. All right, this is not wearing the steel. Okay, it's only rubbing the exterior finish off. Okay, gun steel does not wear. Now, you may even see a scratch or two on the polymer frame, or even the slide on the finish here. You might see a a minor scratch. All right again uh, that's nothing to worry about you know that comes with use abuse on the other hand comes in the form of deep scratches or gouges to any part of the gun whether external or internal now that may that may have been caused in part uh, by scraping a component with a metallic tool such as this which is what you don't want to do because it will create those gouges and deep scratches which will affect the um, ability to keep corrosion away so that's not normal and it's not acceptable if you see that it should be a red flag all right let's go ahead and disassemble this
we'll remove our RSA recoil spring assembly and we'll lift our barrel out. Alright, uh, and so far as the slide, inspect it for gouges, large dings, deep scratches, uh, cracks around the nose ring, and that if you see cracks around the nose ring here, usually it'll be up in this area here. It's generally caused by the slide hitting the ground and that usually happens when somebody's trying to disassemble it and they push the slide off and it just falls off and hit and goes down and hits the floor it'll bend that nose ring and crack it and once it's bent that's it you can't unbend it you have to get a new slide all right um, look for look for a chipped extractor claw alright and make sure the firing pin safety is working okay you shouldn't be able you shouldn't pull that firing pin back alright now you shouldn't be able to push the nose of it through the breech face that that safety should be blocking that firing pin now when you depress the safety and push the firing pin up the nose should should come through the breech face that's how to tell if that safety is working now I'm going to take my thumb off of that safety and let it engage now I'm not able to push it through again that means the firing pin safety is working alright well, let's check the barrel you want to check the lugs for cracks and large dings Take your, take your fingernail and go around the muzzle's crown, alright? The crown is right inside here at the muzzle, right here on the edge, on the inside edge. Alright, so take your fingernail and go around that crown and check for dings or anything catching your fingernail dings in the crown can greatly affect accuracy and absolutely inspect the bore it's a good idea to bring a small bore light with you the uh, okay Let's take a good look at it the bore should be bright and smooth. The rifling in here should be clean and pronounced. Check for material clinging to the rifling. If you see anything like that, it could indicate that lead bullets had been fired through it, which is a no-no for a Glock barrel. Lead particles from non-jacketed bullets can actually weld itself to the bore. If the barrel gets hot enough, and I've personally seen that happen several times and it will ruin the barrel so check that alright now we got the frame check the frame itself for any any cracks especially around the the dust cover up in this area alright and check the rail inserts or tabs here check it for cracks around there okay check each one of them look for cracks look for deformities all right look at the locking block make sure there's no cracks in it okay and check the frame pins for fitment In other words, you want you want to know that they're good and tight, not loose. If they're loose and they're easily moved, well then they could walk out on you during shooting, and that usually indicates that someone has uh, completely detailed this this frame too often. Okay, which is why you should only disassemble it completely, build uh, detail strip it only when necessary. 
and uh, try to keep it to a bare minimum because you can make those holes too large if you keep putting these pins in and out so check that fitment all right and check the drop safety Push your trigger bar completely forward. Make sure your trigger is completely forward as far as it'll go. And then check the drop safety. Alright, it's not going anywhere. That cruciform is not going anywhere. So that drop safety is working. Alright. And finally, need three hands to do this check the uh, check the tension on the on the uh, triggers check the safety leaf here on your trigger check the tension of that Check the tension on that uh, trigger leaf right here, this safety leaf. Make sure it pops back out after you release it. See if that's working. Okay. Make sure it's got the tension it needs in it. Now, after the used Glock passes my inspection and I make the purchase, um, you know, I've just made a habit of immediately replacing certain parts once I get it home. It's probably not necessary, but, you know, it makes me feel better. And what I do is replace the channel liner uh, in here simply because I don't know its condition and I'm certain the firing pin channel needs a thorough cleaning anyway. So I remove it and clean out that firing pin channel real good and then let it dry out then of course I put a new channel liner in. Uh, in in most cases I'll also replace the recoil spring assembly since I have no clue you know of the current round count I don't know how many rounds have been through that that Glock and you know I might just uh, I might wind up just replacing all of the other springs as well since the cost is so little but you know a lot depends on the condition of the gun and all parts that I use and, and replace in my Glocks are Glock factory OEM parts, not aftermarket parts. You know, there, there used to be a time, there used to be a time in my life when, when we would buy a used revolver without hesitation. But buying a used semi-auto pistol was almost unheard of in that time. Uh, simply because they were so prone to malfunction. But now engineering technology in small arms has made such vast improvements since then that these days, you know, we don't hesitate to grab a well-used semi-auto pistol anymore. So, you know, I say that if the price is right, and the clock isn't beat to hell it's probably going to be a good investment okay so uh, we're done here I hope you found this helpful thanks for watching I'm Antonius and you know I'm shooting it straight ciao